Hello, my name is Lauren Willis and I'm going to be doing a presentation today over um, motivation as my classroom intervention for KHP 601. Uh, just to give you a background of what we're doing, um, I've noticed just in the short time that I've been teaching that every student uh, is a little bit different. And on average, you'll have people that do fairly well in the class, but then you'll have some, a couple it seems like in every class, that seem to miss the point of the class. Um, so I wanted to use this study, this teaching intervention opportunity, uh, to look at the underlying notion behind those failures or those people with below average performances. Uh, the difference between those students and the students that shall we say shine in class with A's. Um, after just kind of some research of my own and, and reviewing things and, and just reflecting on what I have taught myself, uh, I just kind of wondered if motivation might not be the underlying factor in all of this. Uh, so we're going to look at two different types of motivation today. Uh, we're going to look at intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Um, students that are motivated uh, intrinsically or motivated from within. Uh, they have this drive to succeed all on their own. There's not anything outside um, that causes them to have any type of um, motivation to do well. Uh, on the complete opposite end of things is the uh, students that are extrinsically motivated. They might be motivated by scholarship opportunities, by good grades, by rewards, by trophies, uh, through their parents, whatever. Anything that's outside of Th themselves that motivates them to, to do well. Um, students that, that have failed or missed the point um, seem to miss their highest level potential. And what I want to look at is to see if we are able to help them discover or even rediscover their motivation. Um, so extrinsically, as I said, anything outside the body, um, anything that's outside themselves that motivates them, um, it can be a variety of different things, but the one thing to note with extrinsic motivation that I've found in research is that it can fade over time. It doesn't really stick with them. You might see uh, quicker results, but um, you're not going to see this to be consistent or for long term. It doesn't have a lot of longevity to it. On the other hand, research shows that there are certain strategies that can um, bring about an intrinsic motivation in students which does have more longevity, uh, seems to be more long term, seems to be uh, a little bit longer before you're able to see the results. It's not as instantaneous, so uh, some people can get defeated with this, uh, but according to research, this can be fostered. Um, you know, previously I just kind of had the notion or the belief that uh, we could do things to motivate students extrinsically, but they were either born with intrinsic motivation they were not. However, according to this research, there are things that we can do as instructors to help cultivate this and help students recreate this, if you will. So we're going to look at specific ways, specific intervention methods that can help um, move this along, if you will, within them. So the study design, I chose uh, one of my upper division uh, teaching health and physical education methodology classes. There are 13 students in the class. 11 of them were males, two were females. They're aged anywhere from 18 to 27 because of the transfer market and those type of things. Um, they were given a 20 question survey. They answered, the, the, they responded on a, a four-point Likert scale, one to four, uh, from with one being uh, not true at all and four being very true. Uh, the pretest was analyzed, um, and then after reading those, analyzing that, I did implement certain uh, teaching strategies, um, intervention methods, if you will, to help see if I couldn't cultivate intrinsic motivation within these students. Um, some of those included uh, just trying to be a role model for them. I, I tried to display excitement about the subject area. I tried to do activities with them rather than just going through a PowerPoint presentation explaining what that was. I actually did the activity. If we talked about activities and games, I did activities and games uh, rather than just talking about the rules or whatever and, and show genuine excitement for it. Um, I tried to support students through one-on-one -on -one contact after class or during advising meetings because most of the students in that class are my advisees so I had the opportunity to work with them outside of class as well. 
Um, I tried to take an interest in what they're interested in, going to wrestling matches, football games, soccer games, uh, whatever you know their interest was. I tried to be involved in that, be supportive of that, ask them questions about that. Um, I tried to give a lot of examples. Some research showed that, that more examples, variety in examples was important in, in promoting intrinsic motivation because you needed to teach to their learning style, so I tried to do that. Uh, implemented student active teaching, so uh, for one particular lesson they had to video record themselves teaching and rather than just submitting it to me for me to analyze, I had them presented in class, explain what was going on, talk about what they would change, what they thought they did well, and then I had other students in the class give them feedback as well. Obviously it needed to be positive or constructive, uh, but it kind of allowed them to take the, the project at the helm and, and understand it better. I, it was a really good learning experience for them. We did a lot of breakout sessions with discussion and that type of thing. Um, I tried to give a lot of praise. Um, there was one particular chapter that I wasn't 100% um, um, comfortable with, I guess. I didn't feel like an expert in adapted physical education. I'm super interested in that area, but I don't have a lot of educational background in that, so I asked our special education director in the School of Education Department to come in co-teach that lesson with me so I taught the physical education aspect and she talked about the inclusion uh, the special education aspect um, and just trying to find ways to, to interest them involve them in the discussion uh, unfortunately um, the results did not show that much of a difference from the pre-test to the post-test. Uh, so after several weeks of the study, uh, I gave them the exact same questionnaire. I even gave them their responses from the original questionnaire and said, you know, if there are any that remain the same, that's fine. If they change, then please indicate that, um, that type of thing. Uh, after 10 weeks of the intervention, only 21 total responses were changed. Uh, so a 20 question questionnaire, 13 students. Uh, as you can tell, that's not a ton of changes. Um, I do think that statistically it wasn't significant. Obviously the limitations were the fact that there were only 13 students. Uh, it was only 10 weeks. And if we re remember back to the research, it said that intrinsic uh, motivations, which is what I was trying to induce, um, it can take some time. So I, you know, I felt like originally 10 weeks would be, you know, long enough to, to see a difference, but you know, clearly they, they're very serious about the longevity of the study. So I think those were definite limitations about that. Uh, more time, I think, would definitely show the results because even though statistically it didn't show uh, a significant increase, I really noticed the difference in their um, just enjoyment in the activities, uh, their confidence, uh, their ability to be open with me, ask me questions if they didn't understand something. Uh, I have students, instead of just coming to do advising, they'll just drop by now and tell me how their game went or ask me a question about something. I had a student this morning come by and just tell me uh, about a, a teaching experience they had when they went and did an observation in a local high school. Uh, things that wouldn't have happened, I don't feel like previously. Uh, students that I've had trouble getting through to, students that have received absence warnings or zeros on assignments. The students that I would have classified as not necessarily excelling in class are now coming to me asking me questions. Um, it's been a really, really good experience as far as that goes. So I do think continuing these same strategies would be ideal. Uh, maybe just perhaps extending it. I do intend to continue to do these things because if nothing else, I do feel like um, it's made me a better uh, professor. It's made me more intentional. Um, so even though it wasn't statistically significant, Significant, which is um, a little bit disheartening. I felt like it was effective in, in a lot of ways. So um, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to address those. Um, thank you so much.